Yeah, we started doing fashion, which is what I did because I worked with Bailey and did that for two or three years. And then you'd get the odd portrait because he owned Ritz newspaper. I don't know if you ever heard of Ritz newspaper. It's a wonderful magazine, you know, lasted for about three years. And um, they did lots of portraits of famous people. And um, I think I did one, the first person I ever, famous person I ever did was John Hurt, just after he did Elephant Man. And um, I was really nervous. And um, uh, I said to my girlfriend, I've got John Hurt tomorrow, so, you know, first, you know, important person. And um, so I said, but I've got a plan, I've got a plan. So I phoned around at everybody I thought knew him and said, what's he like, what's he like? And, it's not, not many people knew what they they just said he, he was a bit of an alcoholic. He liked drink. He liked his drink. They didn't say alcoholic, but they said, you know, he, he liked his drink. And um, so I got two bottles of champagne, two bottles of red wine, two bottles of white wine to cover myself. I was so nervous. And we was in the studio and he came in and um, started chatting. And, and, um, uh, and I thought, I said to my girlfriend, you know, he's done Shakespeare and he's real intellectual and, you know, I'm a bit... I've got to keep the conversation going. You know, when you're a photographer, you have to keep that conversation going. So I said, I'm slightly nervous. So she said, oh, you'll be fine. She said, you, I said, I've got a plan anyway. So we came in and we had a chat for about half an hour and um, he was sitting around and I said, and then it, it went quiet. And it was about 11 o'clock, I suppose, in the morning. I said, uh, like a drink, John. And he went, a bit early, isn't it? I said, yeah, of course it is. I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry, sorry. It's a stupid thing to say this time, isn't it? I said, really sorry, you know. He said, what have you got? <laughs> so I said, well, I've got champagne, red, white, white wine. He said, let's start with the champagne. So we opened the bottle of champagne and we drank champagne. And my assistant, when we finished it, opened the other one without asking, because he was, we were knocking it back, and I was. And, um, um, and we'd, it was about one o'clock now. So for two hours, we've been drinking. And I hadn't even taken a picture yet. And I said to and after I said to my assistant, Shall I get some will you get some lunch in? So we got some lunch in and we opened the bottle of red wine with, with the lunch. And I still hadn't taken a picture yet. And um I said, John, are you okay for time, by the way? He said, Yeah, I got all day, I put the day by. He said, I said, Oh great, perfect, perfect. So after lunch we I started taking pictures and I hated the jacket he was wearing, it was horrible. But I had this black velvet jacket on and I'm almost the same size as him, so well, a bit smaller, but I said, John, do you mind you wearing my jacket? The black's just a bit stronger because I'm shooting black and white. He said, yeah, no problem. Put on the, on the thing. And um, all the time we were opening another bottle and drinking and stuff and spending the afternoon. And I got some really, really good pictures. I was so pleased. And um, it was about four, five, maybe six o'clock. And uh, he said, where do you live? And he, we were both pissed, actually. And my sister was drinking as well. So we didn't drink the whole six bottles. But between three of us, we drank six bottles. You could when you were young, can't you? Do you remember? I couldn't do that now. And um, he said, where do you live, John? And this, I was in Belsos Park, my studio was in Belsos Park. I said, uh, Highgate. He said, oh, great. He said, I live in Hampstead. He said, can you give me a lift home? I said, give you a lift home? I can't even find my car. <laughs> I said, you must be mad. And I said, we'll take a cab. I'll, we'll take a cab and I can drop you off on the way. So he said, okay, good idea. So my assistant ordered a cab and we got in the car and we were both wobbling a bit, I'll tell you. Get in the car and we drive up to Hampstead to this lovely little mews and um, it's a beautiful row of houses, Georgian houses, and opposite there's a lovely old pub. And um, so he said, uh, this is where I live. He said, um, uh, he said uh, uh, it was about, it must have been about 6.30 now, 7. He said, come in, come in, meet Louisa, my girlfriend. Come in and meet, meet her. I said, no, John, I'm, I'm fine. He said, no, no, come in, come on. So we, we paid the taxi and I went in to meet his girlfriend who was cooking dinner. And lovely, beautiful girl. And... Um, she, she saw he was pissed again, you know, and she obviously used to it. And that's why he brought me in, I think. <laughs> so he said, um, he said, oh, John's here. And she said, oh, hi, John. She, she said, well, I'm just doing dinner. Do you want to stay for dinner? And I said, no, 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 thanks. You know, I'm fine. She, he said, how long will it be? She said, oh, half an hour. He said, okay, we're just going to pop over to the Crown, he said, and uh, have, a, have a glass quickly and I'll be back. She said, you better be back. Eight o'clock, no later than eight o'clock. And she said to me, make sure he's back, John, no later than eight, okay? And we were there. 8.30, and we were still drinking. He wasn't buying glasses, he was buying bottles of wine. And I promised to God, we were really, he was really drunk. And um, I was completely out of it. And at nine o'clock, she came over, stormed in the pub, and they knew her as well. The, pub, the whole pub know him, you know, it's like, it, it's like he's local. And she said, it's nine o'clock, the dinner's about, the dinner. He said, look, sit down, sit down, stop, woman, calm down, sit down, sit. And so she sat down, and he got a drink for her. 
And then about 9.30, she went back and she said, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to put it in the oven. It's, it's going to be burnt by the time you get back. And we stayed till opening time. Stayed there till opening time. So God knows what she was thinking or doing, but she must be used to it. But 11 o'clock, it was the old days, 11 o'clock, you had to you know, leave. And um, this was in Hampstead Village. And Hampstead, I don't know if you know Hampstead, you, you walk up the hill to the pond, you know, and the, there's a bus stop there that went to Highgate. So I said, and we, I was all over the place walking up. I said, I better go, John. He said, I'll walk you up to the bus stop. <clears throat> he promised the two of us were arm in arm like this, walking up the high street. And everybody walking past thinking, a couple of old gays, you know, and uh, just laughing. And I, I said, John, I'm really, are you okay? He said, yeah. I said, you okay to get on? He said, you can come and stay the night. I said, no, no, I've got to get back. I must get back. So I waited, I got to the top and he gave me a kiss on the lips. I mean, he wasn't gay or anything, but that's, actors do that, you know. And I thought, um, um, it's, I loved him so much. He was such a lovely man. And uh, he waved goodbye to me. And I uh, stood about half an hour waiting for this bloody bus that didn't arrive till midnight and um, got, got home at midnight. My wife was, girlfriend was in bed, it wasn't my wife. And I got into bed and she said, you've been drinking. I said, yeah, I know, but John likes to drink. And so, you know, we've been drinking, yeah. And she said, um, how did the plan go? Because I said I was going to get in there, get him in and get him out quickly before he realises I'm a bit of a... And I said, it didn't go quite to plan, I said. <laughs> so that was, that was my thing with John. And I photographed him a few times after that as well. We laugh about it. He, and he was always sobered after that. He, he sobered up, but that was... A, uh, so after that, I never got nervous about photographing anybody famous. I mean, after that, that I never, it never bothered me.